The red nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose, and if you ever saw. This is the line feed reading list for December 2011. Now, there's meant to be one in November, and November just sort of flew straight past me. I didn't get to do one. So, this is kind of like a jumbo bumper crimbo edition in a way. I've got an absolute huge stack of mags to get through and there's loads that I didn't get to include like Kagul magazine and a few more so they're all queued up for January hopefully uh, so I better just crack on. I'm going to start with the recent redesign of the US version of Wired um, which I don't think is actually out in the UK properly, probably next week I think. This is the January 2012 edition. Now Scott Didach left quite a while ago and they've had a new art director called Brandon Kalu Kalu Kalua? Kalua? I can't say it, it's really embarrassing. Kavula. Kavula? Somebody correct me please. Please tell me how to say that. Um, I think he came from uh, an American music magazine that got quite a lot of attention for its, for its uh, redesign that he did. And this is the first chance he's had to actually completely revamp the mag. He's got a new typeface that they were trialling uh, by um, Chris Salsby from the KLM Klim Type Foundry. Uh, so it's a really lovely, well constructed typeface, really nice, and really nice to see it sort of used so thoroughly. Um, what have I got to say about the redesign? Eh. I mean, it's there's some re, there's some very normal sort of wide stuff going on. Like the features uh, are pretty crazy. There's this whole thing that they talk about in the editor's letter about how for each section he took a letter and deconstructed it into its different sorts of shapes and forms, and uh, just found it a bit tenuous, really, and just really strange way to describe how how it was sort of done. It was. Uh, yeah, I think it, it, like I think when Didach was there, there was a lot like the design and the editorial very much sort of interwove were interwoven together. Whereas now it's a hard act to follow, and I don't think they're really doing that sort of crossover so much. It's it's more it's sort of it's designed and you know there's not there's not it's not as um, I don't know it's not as complete a whole. It's it's the designs. I mean, it was always decorative before. I think it's even more decorative now. <laughs> I I thought this like this is interesting too because the English version has the same feature. I've always wondered how different art directors deal with like crossovers when the same magazine runs the same thing. Um, and you, it's really fun to compare the English version of that article and the American one to see what sort of differences that there are in there. It's quite fun. Um, this next magazine I actually only bought this morning, so I've only had a really good flick. I've always kept my eye on Foam. Foam is a uh, photography gallery in Amsterdam. It's a really well-known photography gallery. And they've put out a magazine for quite a few years now, and it's always looked really good. And I think this issue is just, it's really just um, hit the nail on the hammer. Like, there's all this stuff in here that is really current really amazing new design trends. I think what's, there's, there's a lot I've seen, like there's this sort of trend for like a certain type of design that's being chucked down on Tumblr by young graphic designers. And it's very, I know older graphic designers tend to refer to it as anti-design, when really it's about celebrating design, picking it apart and throwing it around, which is really exciting. Uh, and the art directors of Foam, the current art directors, have taken this sort of trend that these emerging designers are playing with and uh, sort of giving it a good working through with this magazine. So you see sort of oversized type and type running up the sides of pages and you know really trendy geometric typefaces. I'm pointing to stuff because this is actually really full of really good articles too. There's We started with an article on because uh, it's all about the future of photography so it was like the first article which included Oliver Larrick who is a creative that um, line feed, we've featured in line feed, he's great. Um, but it was about uh, 
artists using indirectly using photography. So it was about photography, but not actually using photos or something. And then the second one was about self-publishing, which obviously is a, a passion of mine. Um, uh, and this was uh, just every article was really, really good. Like, yeah, like. I got really excited about the design and then I picked it up and I got really excited about the content. <laughs> that doesn't always happen, doesn't always happen. Quite often I'll pick up something and I'll think this is a really good read and it looks really nice but this was the first time when, I, for a little while when I sort of picked it up and then was surprised that it all sort of was really well sort of gelling together. That's not proper English is it? Really well gelling together? This, I friggin' hate QR codes, but actually they've made them look fairly decent. I'm not really sure what happens when you click on them. That was funny too, it was photographs of, like, the porch. Oh yeah, this was weird, it was like an ad saying, we've made this amazing new mug for the foam gallery. It's amazing, it's a mug. Just like other galleries have made mugs. It's like, what are they taking, is this Dutch sense of humour coming through, is that what it is? <laughs> I really hope the mug page was meant to be a funny joke. I took it as that. Oh my god, yeah, and inside here, they've because it's part of the future, they're talking about the future of publishing and how photography will be viewed, like how we will see photography. And they've invited several guest curators to make individual little magazines within the centre of the magazine. So there are all these glossy full-colour pages. There's, I think there's four different little magazines in there by different uh, creatives. So you saw one back there called Seesaw, which is hideously ugly. <laughs> it was better inside, but it only like the, each one only takes up about six, six or eight pages. See, there's the division between um, one mini mag and another mini mag, which was that one. This one we're looking at now is curated by Fathom. Uh, so that yeah, and they talk about like. If photography is so accessible and is, if you can just download photographs from doing a Google search, then what is the role of photography in magazines in the future? And Which is really, really interesting. Again, if you're an art director and you commission photography for magazines, like it's, it's almost sort of accepting the fact that possibly people are just nicking photography off the internet, you know, obviously like paying for it where they can, but that's the main big change that the internet has brought to the world of magazine design and art direction. It's that, it's that photography has become uh, more accessible. I was going to say cheaper, but it's not because you still get people commissioning like amazing photo shoots. Um, but there's this other sort of realm where it's it's quite cheap and cheerful. I could talk about this magazine for ages. and. I really think it's a really good snapshot of the current state of editorial and graphic design outside of the UK, which I will talk about later, I think. Um, we're on to pin-up now, which is again another line feed personal fave, and I probably feature it every single time it comes out. <laughs> it still amazes me that they, the whole thing is in Arial, which is the hideous like Helvetica substitute. They, they just have this massive love affair with Ariel, and yet they managed to make it actually look quite decent. Um, yeah, I, this they play with the type loads, though, they don't, and they do it in a really bold way that doesn't hide the fact that it's crappy old Ariel. I do I think readability is a bit of an issue sometimes. Like with this issue, it was lovely seeing that spread all over the double fade spread, the, the intros, but they hadn't made any gutter allowance, so you couldn't actually read the... I don't know if they thought, well, no one reads these <laughs> intros or something. I don't know, I, I, I don't like it when art directors disrespect the text in a magazine because I don't want to buy something I don't... I'm not able to read properly. But, um... Oh, I'm going to point out something here. This is actually... I don't know if it's still on, but this is a really good exhibition. What are the dates on there? I can't see the dates. If you're in London and you're near the Architectural Association in Bedford Square, which is, I think, Bloomsbury, there's an exhibition of architectural fanzines. Uh, and it's really good. They're sort of built tables with ditches in them, and you can sit. And when I was there, though, a lot of the um, 
sort of bods that hang out at the Architectural Association were using the tables to have meetings, so you couldn't actually get to half the magazines, which is a bit weird. Um, yeah, I mean, pin-up, this isn't one of the most amazing issues, but it's still got a lot of, you know, going for it. There's a whole section devoted to porcelain sort of stuff. But rather than do it all in one shoot, they've separated it all up into different weird sort of shoots. So uh, by different people. It's funny to see Sylvia Prada is an illustrator that I thought was quite interesting. She should do a lot of work for the face, you know, a few years before it closed. And she's she pops up in Pin Up, this issue as well, uh, doing a bit of illustration work. Uh, what we've got next is... I'm, I'm dead chuffed, actually. Shall I blow my own trumpet? That's very... But anyway, uh, that, that I took that picture, that one on the cover. Dead chuffed me. Um, C20 is the sort of members magazine for the 20th Century Society. So this little brochure sort of explains that they, they do case study work in the hope of sort of um, saving sort of 20th century architecture. Uh, because it's, it's sort of really neglected in the many ways in London, like uh, a lot of the stuff from the 50s, 60s, 70s and 80s just gets knocked down without any sort of thought, you know. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm a personal fan of a lot of this architecture and I think there's a lot of merit to, to these buildings. So the 20th century society is quite important and they do do, they do, do um, some good work. Like there's some more pictures that I took of this mural in uh, London which uh, through their work was actually saved, it's been um, given special status now and if this building is uh, renovated or taken down or anything like that, the mural has to be preserved. And that's only this year um, after 20th Century Society's campaign to save a whole bunch of murals from the 50s and 60s uh, that that's happened. Um, so I, I, I feel quite proud that I've managed to help save this amazing uh, mural thing just through the magic of photography <laughs> um, although I have to say they did all the work I mean I just took the photos and they contacted me to ask so they could use them uh, I didn't talk about the design of that at all but that was designed by uh, the team behind I magazine and they've also des redesigned the architectural review lately recently and I really want to talk about those three publications uh, Simon S. Esterton oh God, my pronunciation is terrible. Uh, should I try it again? Simon Esterson. Esterson. It's not that hard, really, is it? I could waff. I need to talk about that, but I'm not going to do it now. I'm going to talk about mid-century, another mid-century um, related thing. Now, this is one I've shown before, and I subscribed to it straight away without look seeing an issue because a it was about mid-century design, which I'm really interested in. B, it was designed by Hyperkit, who also designed the identity, the previous identity for the 20th Century Society, and I really like a lot of the stuff they do. Um, having said that, it's just so disappointing. <laughs> it's so dull. Like, it's... and it's so not mid-century, the design. I mean, it... yeah, there's like a bit of Futura in there, but it's not like a, you know, original cut or anything. This, and the, the editorial is so flaky, like this is about, there's a film called Fahrenheit 451 which was, a lot of it was filmed on an estate in London which was amazingly modern for the time and they just sort of have a paragraph about it. And yeah, I just, yeah, I don't like it. This is much better. This is called Head Full of Snakes. Uh, there's, I've got a whole bunch of Australian mags actually and this is the first one out of the, out of the box. Um, it's about motorbikes, and it's uh, put together by um, Luke Wood and Stuart Geddes. Now, I, I don't really know much about Luke, but Stuart is a graphic designer who actually is one of the few people in uh, Australia that has um, a risograph machine, uh, which he's had for quite a few years. And this is the first time I've seen him do like a really big you know, large-scale, full-size publication on his uh, risograph. So this is kind of cool. Um, he calls the risograph a small press. You can actually hire, you can actually hire the, the, the machine to, to print stuff. And it's really strange, like, uh, usually you get sort of um, quite a neat screen 
um, when when little Joe did the issue on Risograph, uh, you could see the screen. But this is like a funny raster effect, so the images are really strange. Um, you can see here. I mean, they they sort of look washed out in places. That's actually that's not like the video actually is showing what it looks like. If that's what video does. <laughs> it's, it's it's a really curious sort of printing thing. It works best, I think, here where there's reproductions of old ads and uh, comic strips and stuff like this. And this was great. This um, just using the two color overlays because it essentially it's, it's it would be you would be running the same page through several times to get the overlays of colors. And it's got a friggin' flexi disc. When's the last time you saw a flexi disc? It, yeah, some of you youngsters probably never. Um, <laughs> isn't that awesome? I have, I have nothing that I can play it with, but um, I thought that was pretty gosh darn exciting. Uh, there's an interview online with uh, the guys behind Head Full of Snakes to if you go to Triple R, uh, Triple R's website. I might put a link in later on. Here's our second nag from Australia, and this one is put together by the Australian Graphic Design Association. So. It's quite a high-brow little piece uh, for the Australian design community. Um, and it's divided into sections by different design practitioners uh, on the theme of what's next. So the same theme as foam, really. It's, I guess everyone's asking what's next at the moment. Who knows? Um, so you have in here... Oh, you have John Warwicker, who used to be in Tomato, and... They're all blokes, unfortunately. I don't know why there's no female representation in here, but uh, I guess you get that sometimes, don't you? Um, who else is in here? There's a few people I haven't heard of. Spike Hibbard and... Oh, um, I've heard of Gary Emery. <laughs> so, I haven't heard of Alt Group. That's quite interesting. Um, but it, the whole thing is designed by... Oh, we're looking at this section, which is put together in the middle by... Uh, Fabio on Garato Design, so they're, they're quite well known for doing really lovely lush, sort of uh, quite clean sort of stuff, so it was quite nice to see that in there. I'm looking at the credits because I want to find out. Oh yeah, of course, this is designed by Dominic Hofstede and Marcus Fuog. I hope I said that right, Paul. It's Paul Marcus Fuog, it's not even Marcus. Uh, but they've... they've um, Hofstede Design and Co-op Design, who Paul uh, runs, they're both like really amazing design studios in Melbourne, uh, which definitely worth checking out. Um, especially Co-op, because they seem to be doing a lot of really amazing contemporary stuff that you know outpacing a lot of the other agencies around. Um, gosh, uh, another Australian magazine. This is the male, I guess, brother magazine of. Frankie, uh, which is a magazine produced, I think it's in Queensland, and it's one of the first Australian women's fashion magazines, Frankie, that sort of felt a, sort of a bit more loose and less sort of salesy and gimmicky. So they've tried to do the same thing with this male version, which is called Smith's Journal. Um, I really like it. It's, you pick it up and it's got quite a heft to it and a really lovely textured cover. The problem I have with it is this weird sort of twee thing, style that, you know, is sort of infected <laughs> popular culture at the moment. Um, I, I don't want to call it austerity chic, but that's kind of is the way to go. It's all this sort of stuff of looking really old and collecting Mickey Macs and nothing's modern. It's all, you know, a bit twee and a bit, oh, look, you know, sheds made out of boats. Oh, isn't that cute? Maybe I could go live in a boat shed. You don't want to really. You want to live in a nice modern house. But you can look at a boat shed and pretend, you know, you can pretend you're in the American wilderness. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I'd love to be on the open road. Oh, you wouldn't. It's cold and miserable. We'd love to be watching TV. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's all just, it feels really amazingly surface to me now. I can remember it being quite exciting that suddenly we were just, you know, people were discovering craft and wanting things that were, you know, well made and well crafted. But I just feel like anything, it's a trend that's become just a, a surface sheen now. Um, and possibly Smith's Journal have sort of dunked themselves in it a bit too much. Um, it'll be interesting to see whether they keep this sort of fey twee 
you know, men making chairs thing going. I can imagine actually it's quite it's quite big in Australia because it's a lot it's a lot about craft and Australians are really big into making stuff with their hands. And that that's not a bad thing. I'm talking more about the presentation here. And as much as that's a criticism, there's some lovely, lovely stuff in this magazine, like typewriters by authors, just sort of shot on their own on a page with minimal fuss. It's just, that is just really lovely in itself. I think the problem is, is you get, you just get endless lovely stuff in here. <laughs> that shouldn't be a problem, should it? It's weird. I, yeah. I do like it, but I just a bit over this style for oldie worldy stuff. Um, yeah, it comes with a poster, which I thought was quite nice too. Although I haven't put it on my wall because see, I'm saying it's quite nice, and yet I'm saying at the same time I think it's a bit twee. But yeah, we'll see how that trend goes and how that mag goes, really. But for an Australian mag, really good. Um, Stack. I always feature something from Stack in here. Um, the last couple of mags have either been ones that I always feature or that I've worked on, so I haven't included them. But I wanted to show you some of the awesome sort of other things you get in a stack subscription. And these, these, I find these just as exciting, honestly. Not just doing a sales thing, because I wouldn't know how. Um, this is a magazine that I've actually picked up before called Knockback. Um, I don't know when it comes out, I think it's quite irregular. Uh, but this one, like, I, do, it's, I, I feel like I've been living in boys world lately and this is just completely the opposite, it's total girls world in your face and stuff like, like there's a page that just says fuck cupcakes on it and <laughs> um, just really awesome sort of uh, stuff like that. Um, I There's stuff about why you would publish a zine as well, it's just really, the attitude is just really good, it's really healthy. Yeah, I wanted to read this out. Why we want to print on paper? A. We're a magazine. B. You can't hold a website in your arms. C. We don't know any programmers. D. We don't want to meet any programmers. And C. The internet's a massive slag. Which I thought was just brilliant. Um, this came in the most recent stack mailing. And you might have seen something called Rap before. It's, it's, it's pretty special. It looks really lightweight here, it's like four pages, but then, woohoo, it's actually wrapping paper, masquerading as a magazine. Although, you, it's so nice, you're not really going to want to wrap anything in it, I don't think. But I guess if you did, then, like, when someone unwraps it, they can then read the magazine. So it's sort of like, it would be a double present, in a way. And I have a present that needs wrapping. Um, so it seems a shame to actually use it, though. I'm in a quandary now. Shall I just move on to the next mag, which is Little Joe? Uh, and I actually, I rushed, the reason I rushed out this morning was to get a copy of Little Joe and I happened to get a copy of Foam at the same time. This has only just come out, it's very fresh. And the previous issues uh, were done by, I think, Ditto Press on Risograph, but this is the first issue that's um, proper printed, like offset or whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, gloss over my technical knowledge of things. Uh, yeah, and it's um, they say it's a magazine about queers and cinema mostly, and it's it's um, it is cinema from a sort of gay perspective, but not necessarily how you would expect. As you can see from these lovely layouts, it's designed by a guy called Sam Ashby. Oh, it's actually designed, edited, and published published by Sam Ashby. Uh, and he for a actually does movie posters for a living, so that's the reason why it's so well informed about film and also looks so amazingly good. And there's some really awesome articles, like, there's just such, um, such pride and passion in this little magazine um, that you don't see in a lot of, you just don't see in a lot of mags. Like, everything feels really personal and infused with, like, personal experiences and all sorts of stuff. It's really nice. Um, and I, I actually think it's not just because it's a gay mag about films by, uh, you know, um, someone who's into that stuff. I think that generally there's not a lot of magazines that have this sort of warm, fuzzy intimacy about them. And there's lots of lovely little inserts. Like I showed up the front there, there was an insert. It's actually by Mike Mills. So that's a bit of a, 
bit of a coup. I think he's designed it all, and he sort of talks at the back page about, um, so he made a film recently about his father coming out gay at age 75. So the whole little booklet's about um, 1955, and it's illustrated by Mike Mills. That's really lovely. And there's an article about sort of um, the AIDS era of filmmaking, and that's that's where that dollar bill thing comes from. So you're looking, you're reading about it, and then you can you actually pick up the little bit of the thing. There's uh, loads of good stuff in here about opening titles design, uh, which is really good, and I just can't recommend it enough. It's an awesome little publication, and possibly like the best one yet, I think. Number three, it's just getting better. Oh, where are we? Ah, oh, this is another magazine I subscribe to. I've subscribed to two. I subscribe to Little White Lies, and it's nice that. Um, again, I always have mixed feelings about about it's nice that though. I think it started off really strong, but I'm I'm just not sure the direction it's going in is is so so amazing, especially design wise. This issue just looks. Uh, I know it just, it's meant to look really current, but it, it's just, there's so much wrong with the design of that. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's, it's a matter of taste. I mean, a lot of people really rate this. I, I'd be interested to hear comments on what people think of the latest issue. It's a new art director. He's from, where's he from? It's from another magazine, which I'll talk about later, and uh, it's just really bland, the design, I think that's the problem. And really long line lengths, so it's not even like he wants you to read. It's, he wants you to look at pictures and that's about it. That's all I can tell from the design of this magazine. Um, Aside from the design, there's some awesome, awesome features. There's one uh, by uh, interview with Terry Jones from ID Magazine, who is one of my personal heroes and always worth reading about. If you don't, if you read anything about magazines, read read an article by Terry Jones or a book by Terry Jones, because he will tell you all you need to know about magazines in the most simplest and succinct terms, even about design in general. Um, I can't. I, I, he's just really worthwhile reading. Uh, there's also like a thing on independent publishers in there. There's interviews with filmmakers Lawrence and Sander who do uh, some really awesome quirky sort of uh, conceptual videos. And like like any like all the previous, it's nice that it's a really mixed bag. I I really feel the design is really not going in the right direction though. I think that's the, that's the the bugbear I have with it. But editorially, pretty darn awesome. Uh, Gym Class Magazine. Again, if you want to know anything about magazines, read this. It's just soaked in magazine-y goodness. <laughs> it's like a mag... I keep saying it's like a, a something or other bubble bath. It's like a magazine-y bubble bath. I've got to get a better um, turn of phrase, I think. I'm over wearing that one. This one opens with some massive, massive, awesome illustrations. Hey, that was a really weird ad for Mag Culture at the front too, where it's just the website, but all the text has been put into X's. I thought it was really cool. Um, I like anything that looks a bit like a mistake though. In here, uh, Jeremy Leslie interviews Robert Newman. Daniel Gray talks to Mark Porter from The Guardian. Uh, I'm flicking through while I'm saying it. There's a big thing about L, um, and I showed you that cover, Winona Forever, because that just that expression just was really common when I was in high school. It's like in all the media and stuff like that. There's Luke Heyman, there's Penny Martin and Jop Van Benekom from. Uh, there's just so much in here, and it's really amazing interviews. Um, I think. I'm actually flying somewhere soon. I might take that on the plane, and I think that's pretty done. Good reading matter for travelling. All right, so we're almost there. We got two, two to go. Uh, I've, I've wanted to include loud and quiet for a while, and it made sense that um, the 2001 reviews special should turn up in this here um, reading list. It's just, it's a free mag. You can. 
pick it up in shops and it's so I wrote a piece for graphic ages ago about how the best music magazine are the ones that are free and local like the, the big names like your enemies and your uncuts they're all complete rubbish really they are rubbish the best music mags are the ones that you just pick up like stool pigeon and I think sup you can now buy in shops which is actually a bit better because it was hard to find um, but mags like sup and this and loud and quiet and these are the these are the proper music mags, um, and it, you know there's it's they're really current. Like I think mainstream music mags are dead. This is where proper music mags are. And this one's oh excuse me, this one's designed by Lee Belcher, who actually um, works at Wallpaper as well. So this is um, not only is he busy sorting out stuff at Wallpaper, he's also helping out with Loud and Quiet, which is pretty darn awesome. Um, and you can see it's just really lovely, well-designed uh, newspaper. Oof! Uh, the last one we've got is sort of a book. Is it a book? Maybe it's a catalogue. I'm not sure what it is, but it's pretty cool. I really like it. And I haven't had a good read of it yet, but it's... Uh, yeah, it's just packed jammed. I mean, up the front there's a few sort of essays. Um, it's pretty much, it's to go with an exhibition at the Walker Arts Centre at the moment called Graphic Design Now and Production. This is essentially the catalogue, but it's sort of got a lot of really, um, you know, uh, lots of text for you to sort of get into. Um, and it's divided up into sections about different sorts of design. The magazine section is by Jeremy Leslie uh, from Mag Culture, who curated the magazine section of the exhibition. Um, and it is, it's just an amazing roundup of everything that's current in magazine design, uh, which is the same for each section. It's just everything that's current in poster design, everything that's current in typography. The theme is meant to be designers as producers. So it's designers that are making things, not necessarily for clients, possibly for other designers or for themselves. That is a cover for graphic map. Uh, wallpaper, I'm pointing to stuff I really like <laughs> a lot. Um, oh, I have to show this off too. Line Reads actually featured in there as well uh, under the section, I think, um, print, print on demand publications. There's even iPad publications. So it's bang up to date as far as trends and stuff like that. Um, it makes me want to go and see this exhibition. It makes me want to go visit the States, which I've never wanted to do before in my life. The posters are lush. The posters are just amazing. And there's loads of people that have been featured. Well, obviously, I've featured on Line Feed and, and stuff like that. And you'll probably see a few um, things from here on our Tumblr page as well. Typography is covered. I've mentioned that before. But it, you can see just from that selection, it's just the most recent current stuff. So even though this is meant to be on the theme of uh, designers as producers, it's really a snapshot of where graphic design is at the moment and that's what essentially they aim to do with this um, exhibition so they've pulled it off really well uh, oh yeah uh, or Becca I think that's how you say it I'm not sure my pronunciations are crap anyway um, but they do like a parasite magazine that, and that was it there I was just flicking through but it that they have a similar thing with that sort of black with the colors on the side that appears in all sorts of different magazines so that's that. You can order it through the Walker uh, shop online, so you don't feel like you, you're missing out if you haven't seen the exhibition. Uh, but it's if you want a snapshot of graphic design at the moment, that's where you go. Uh, and we've come to the end. Oh, and it's it's only slightly over half an hour, so it's, we haven't gone massively over. I'm trying not to do these for too long. Um, but um, yeah, all that's left, I guess, for me to say is to, to thank Stack as usual for supporting uh, these here vids um, and go to stackmagazines.com to get your subscription and get a surprise magazine in the post, plus all those cool little things like those little, um, like, um, what's it called? Knock back and wrap and stuff like that. You get all that with the magazine, so it's not like just getting a magazine, you also get lots of bonus awesome stuff as well, um, and curated as well. So it's not like just random, it's it's um, well thought out as well. Oh, I'm so waffly now, aren't I? It's stackmagazines.com anyway. 
Uh, that I was just spelling Happy New Cheer because I didn't say Happy Christmas or Happy New Year. So Happy New Cheer because it's sort of this is this place. <laughs> is that all right? It doesn't make sense otherwise, does it? H N C. Oh, Zoom, Zoomy thing. It's a bit weird. Yeah. So um, thanks for dropping by. Thanks for checking out the vids and uh, have a happy New Year. I'm just think and roll on 2012 really. Uh, for more vids and stuff visit linefeed.me and I stop now. See you later. Happy Crimbo!